I'm Taylor Hale. Every year ready. I'm the other Taylor. We started out with Taylor Garland Benny's <laughs> research topic this morning, and in her research topic, she talked about an athletic trainer who did a rehabilitation with a reconstruction instead of a repair, and it was the other Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. So while doing this uh, rehabilitation with this picture, I noticed some postural issues, so I'm going to talk to you about postural issues in a Division Three baseball pitcher from Emory Henry College. So clearly, I just had a one subject case study. So here's your outline for today. We're going to first talk about my clinical question, and we're going to go over the history of the athlete, and then we're going to go through some of the methods that I did through the whole rehabilitation process and what I did after I came up with my clinical question. And then I'm going to show you the results I'm going to show you some of my discussion topics, and then I'm going to conclude, and then you all will be free to ask any questions. So my clinical question was, did the pitcher's postural issues cause him to not be able to throw correctly, resulting in his injury? So I, during my research, I noticed a lot of kinetic chain research that was done, and as a baseball pitcher, you need to be able to open up so you can come all the way back in your throwing motion and come over top. My <coughs> client, patient, I, I noticed he had some rounded shoulders. You'll get to see a lovely picture of him here in just one second. And he also, before his injury, he threw submarine. So he came here causing the back of his causing the ulnar collateral ligament rupture and resulting in the surgery and him getting to spend his wonderful time with me. So after he started throwing again, I noticed that he still wasn't coming over the top. He was still kind of here. He was up from where he was, but not where I wanted him to be. So that caused his clinical question. Okay, he's a 20-year-old male. He is a Division three baseball pitcher. And like I just said, he ruptured his UCL and he had Tommy John surgery. And he did not start throwing submarine until he came to Emory and Henry. And he is now a junior, so he had the, rup the rupture occurred in his sophomore year. So whenever I first started his rehab, of course, I needed to focus on getting his range of motion back and getting swelling out and managing pain, which he didn't have a lot of pain, or he didn't, he told me he didn't, but that's an objective thing. So, or a subjective thing. So I did a lot of passive stretching with him, trying to just get him back to full range of motion. And once I got him back to full range of motion and pain free, and I used pre-modulation currents and ultrasound and laser and massage and things to help with the first steps of the rehabilitation process. And once he got full range of motion, he was pain free and he was feeling good, we started with the first ten program. And these pictures are just a few it's not the whole Thursday program, there's two more pages. But these just show you the different motions that he did. And the majority of the Thursday program was done with bare bands and different colors determine like the resistance that is given. And then some was done with weights. But over the summer, I was not here, neither was my client. And we worked together, and he decided he wasn't going to do his weights anymore, so he just made it strictly therabands. He did everything that he was doing with weights with therabands. So whenever I came back, I noticed the postural issues, and I said to myself, okay, I want to fix this problem. I want him to be able to be pain-free in throwing. So I came up with these other theraband exercises for him to do. That way he was just adding to what he was already doing with his rehab process and all of these <coughs> methods focus on the muscles of the upper back in hopes that it's going to kind of strengthen everything back there to where it's pulling him back into a normal neutral position. So there's a few examples of a few of these. So here's my client with his black out eyes. <laughs> and the top two pictures are his initial measurements and the bottom two are the final measurements. So to take the measurements, I looked at forward head posture with an inclometer 
or however you say that, I've never said that right. And I looked at scapular distance using a tape measure and then I used a plumb line. And these are actually two different plumb lines because the plumb line I used disappeared. Go figure. <laughs> and so as you can see, everything's not lining up in these pictures at the top. He's off center with the frontal posture and his ear, his shoulder, his knee, and his ankle are all supposed to line up and they don't. His knee's actually kind of back a little bit. He has shorts on and the plumb line's actually in front of his lateral lines. So he's not lining up too hot and you can see how bad his rounded shoulder posture is. And so whenever I took my final measurements, his forward head only increased by 10 degrees, but I would I wasn't really focusing on the forward head as much as I was his shoulders. His scapulas came back like there's a 16 centimeter difference, so they were closer by 16 centimeters. And then the final measurements, his ears starting to line up with his shoulders, not completely there. It's in line with his knee, and we're not in line with his ankle yet. And as you can see here, he's slightly more centered with the plumb line going down through the center of the nose. So. This is only a seven week process, so that was part of my discussion. So my first day, I only had one delimitation that I really noticed and that was knowing that I was going to have that break with him over the summer. I knew it was coming. I tried to take steps to take care of that problem. I wrote out a protocol for him to follow over the summer, but like Taylor Garlovini said, you don't always know if they're doing that. And that kind of brings me into my limitations. He didn't communicate well with me over the summer. I would text him pretty much every week and say, hey, how's things going? And there were several times that he said, oh, I just, I decided to take this week off. My shoulder was hurting. I cut my finger. <laughs> I need to take this week off. So that was a slight limitation because it set us back to where I wanted to be and not where the doctor wants him to be now and he also had <clears throat> some setbacks with other problems like his shoulder issue causing him pain not being able to throw the left side of his back has gotten really tight and he's in pain so he can't throw or do his workouts it hurts. So those are some of my problems throughout and I also feel like if I would have been around over the summer I would have noticed the postural problems sooner than I did and I might have started this earlier and it would have been longer than seven weeks. So that was something that I wish could have happened. And then my clinical question was answered because as I saw him progress in his throwing over the seven week process, he's still not throwing over the top, but he has raised up in his throwing motion and he is now pain, th pain free in his throwing motion. And that was something that I really wanted him to get to because when he, whenever I first started this process, I asked him, I said, what's your pain when you throw? in your shoulder and he was on a scale of 0 to 10 he said an 8. It hurts. And now he says at my worst it's a 1. So that's awesome. And I also did some external range of motion with him in the beginning and I got to about 5 to 10 degrees and he was like no stop. That hurts. So now I can get him to as far as I can push him and he's like oh it's it's a little tight, it's not really any pain. So I feel like my clinical question was answered, but I only had one subject and I feel like there needs to be further research to support these findings with a larger um, group of people, larger sample size, and I would use injured and non-injured to make a comparison. So where are you? 
is looking at the ulnar collateral or the shoulder? Because you seem to be going back to shoulder pain a lot more than anything related to the elbow. Well, my rehab was based on the elbow, but when he started throwing from doing his, like coming back into participation, that's when he started having the shoulder problems. And he said he didn't throw submarine until he got to college, and typically pitchers are not going to change their mechanics. Why, what what made him change his mechanics? He told me he Just didn't pitch, pitch well, submarine did before he, he came. Did before he came. She said he did. He didn't. Yeah, he, that's what he told me. Okay, and did you address any tightness in the anterior portion of the chain as you were addressing this? Because I know you said I didn't address the forward head, but the forward head when you talk about upper cross syndrome is typically in relation to this because I can't see forward unless right. I, I look up. Did you address any of the anterior train in hopes of speeding that up? Except maybe something you <coughs> can incorporate that would speed the process a little bit. Yeah, they do ask it about the changing the mechanics of pitching body weight. Yeah, that just seems to really count. Unless, I mean, many times you'll see shoulder, you'll see elbow in response to compensation for a That's, shoulder. So. I saw a lot of that in my research that with a lot of injuries throughout the body, you have your kinetic chain, and when something a top hurts, you kind of change your way of doing things. So in some ways you sort of know you wanted to see if addressing the shoulder would aid in the mechanics as opposed to did it cause it? Kind of make you're never gonna know the answer to that question. But he could you improve said, this yeah. throw by addressing He also said he had he hurt his shoulder when he was in like the eighth grade or something pitching. And it's just kinda like a reoccurrent pain. Maybe shifting title. Yeah, so the athlete said that a coach had instructed him to throw this way in order not to be injured. Is okay. Like that. Coach um, instructed him to throw that way because there are benefits that come with pitching submarine in baseball. The ball has a whole lot more movement than okay. normal pitching. Because your fastball just, I mean, it has its natural curve with submarine pitching, but it's horrible for the ligament. So it was more for the team's benefit than yes. <laughs> but I think that he I threw can imagine a coach that way because he injury. Well, technically I don't know that they've actually shown that. I don't know of any research that has really suggested that though. I mean biomechanically it makes sense, but mm -hmm. I don't know of any research study that specifically, specifically looks, looks at it. That. So um, mm -hmm. that's a jump for me with that statement. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I have a feeling he wasn't throwing correctly before he came, mm -hmm. but I was just going off of what he told me on that one. So I'm mechanic to learn in a that very thing. short time. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. <coughs>